Welcome back to The Talking Hedge. I'm Josh Kincaid, and this is your Cannabis Business Podcast. Access to banking services is probably one of the most limiting factors in the U.S., which is helping the Canadian companies thrive by gaining access to capital in Canada and then coming down here and spending it. The reason why this is such a big deal is because these companies can then apply for regular loans like an SBA or Small Business Administration loan. They can get uh, lenders to give them money for any purchase orders or factoring, which is on any money from accounts receivable. They can also get money from uh, investors who have sin clauses or any ban against investing in tobacco or liquor or alcohol or cannabis. And so this opens up for a lot of institutional investors wanting to create a lot of capital and opportunities with funds that are cannabis or hemp specific. So once banking opens up, that's going to open up a lot more access for companies to expand and grow uh, and become buyout targets, essentially, for Canadian companies who already have access to capital. So it's a really big deal, and it's going to change the game in a lot of ways from cannabis cafes, uh, because once money starts getting flown around, then you have influence, and that influence is going to be seen drastically. So the payments processor recently joined the number of growing companies, municipalities, and others lobbying Congress to approve cannabis banking legislation. Last week, BlackRock got into the game. They're one of the biggest institutional investors out there. And now Merrill Lynch launches a cannabis sector coverage and predicts more cross-border deals. So all of this is more uh, proof of normalization and that nobody is waiting around for the Safe Banking or the, the Safe Harbor Act. Uh, some of these institutional firms are at least moving into covering the space so that they can make a, an educated decision when they do get the green light from, from the Uncle Sam. Bank of America Merrill Lynch deepened its interest in the cannabis industry by initiating coverage of the burgeoning sector less than a year after it financed Constellation's multi-billion dollar investment in Canada's canopy growth. The report said that the combined market share of the 14 largest Canadian cultivators could exceed domestic market consumption by mid-2021, and international strategies are now critical to the Canadian market, which is small relative to the global opportunities. Furthermore, oversupply in Canada would drive prices lower and accelerate consolidation. There's over 50 publicly traded Canadian cannabis licensed producers, far too many for a cannabis market the size of Canada. Bank of America Merrill Lynch estimated a global $166 billion industry emerging from the shadows. Europe follows at 25% with Asia at 21 and Africa 9%. Canada accounts for just 3% of that market, the key driver for companies located there looking for international growth. There's been a couple of bills recently with the States Act and the Safe Harbor Act. Both of those kind of kick the can down the road, but essentially allow for the states to act independently without... Uh, for the prosecution from the federal government so that the states and its employees, um, including banks and insurance companies, to be able to transact with cannabis companies and not be uh, penalized. Late last week, Canopy Growth announced that it had reached an agreement to purchase 100% of U.S. cannabis investment company Acreage Holdings in a unique structured deal. Canopy is a big player in the Canadian market and would love to increase its reach into the much larger U.S. market, but is prohibited from doing so because of its status as a U.S. listed company. Acreage is a U.S. company that owns 87 dispensaries and 22 cultivation facilities in the U.S. in jurisdictions where those activities are legal, as well as valuable limited supply licenses and permits for that activity. They describe themselves as vertically integrated, participating in cultivating, processing, and dispensing. Acreage also boasts former U.S. House Speaker John Boehmer, former Massachusetts Governor William Weld, and former Canadian Prime Minister Brian Mulroney as members of the board as well as other heavy hitters from the corporate world. In an innovative arrangement, Canopy will acquire all of Acreage by paying $300 million in cash up front and acquire the rights to complete the deal by exchanging the rest of Acreage shares for 0.58 shares of Canopy each. Current share prices imply a total purchase price of $3.4 billion. And Canopy has the right to back out of the deal if cannabis is not legal at the federal level in the U.S. within seven years. So with that, Canopy will get a foothold into the coveted U.S. market while remaining clearly inside U.S. laws and exchange requirements. And Acreage gets a big pile of cash to fuel its voracious acquisitions habits. So what do you call it? Is it an acquisition, a merger, a call option? In a way, it's really all of these. This arrangement also highlights that although there remains an inconsistent set of laws and regulations that would appear to stifle the growth of the cannabis industry in North America, creative minds tend to find their way around senseless roadblocks. It also might be a wake-up call to U.S. legislators who are on the fence about two current bills in Congress to make up federal laws about cannabis more consistent. 
California is kind of driving the way with cannabis banking at the moment. So there's a California legislator considering a plan intended to encourage more banks to do business with cannabis companies. So this bill would authorize state regulators to share detailed sales, cultivation, and shipping information collected from cannabis companies with banks. A step supporters hope would provide additional assurance to financial institutions that a cannabis shop or grower is operating within the law. However, most banks don't see those rules as a shield against charges that could include aiding drug trafficking. And they say that the rules are difficult to follow, in effect, placing the burden on banks to determine if a cannabis is complying with all legal rules. Ultimately, the banks are a hierarchy or, or a cartel, quite literally. They're all kind of owned uh, by the same entity all, all the way up to the Bank of International Sediments. But they're not going to give the thumbs up until it's okay. They're not going to work with a state unless the federal government implements the state's act and allows them uh, to deal with each state individually. They have strict requirements with Know Your Customer or KYC uh, a bank has to know who their customer is. There is no just kind of plausible deniability anymore. And so they've increased that to know your customer's customer. And so there really is no uh, opportunity to say, well, I didn't know about that. And they're not willing to do any of that because there's no benefit. There's not enough money in it for them. That's really all it boils down to. And so until the States Act passes, this really isn't going to go anywhere. I mean, it's great to to kind of get it going and, and moving forward for the eventuality of the Safe uh, Harbor or the States Act, uh, which is Congress kicking down the liability to each state. Once the States Act is implemented at the federal level, then this is going to matter. So it's good that they're writing the bills now so that it's done and written for the eventuality of, of uh, the federal government kicking the can down the road to each state. And with that, we're going to roll this one up. I'm Josh Kincaid. This is The Talking Hedge. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, or don't. And I'm out.